I would like to thank Honorable Chancellor, Mr. Shivanadar, and all the members of the higher management of the Shivanadar University for this honor done to me. I treat it as a unique privilege to receive this in the company of three distinguished personalities and in a forum graced by eminent Mr. Arun Sarin, KB, respected Dr. Isher Alwalia, and other senior functions of JNU, and the very esteemed guests who are present here, some of whom happen to me by my guest. I see Arun and Renu here, and Dr. Ramachandran there. So I consider it a deep, deep privilege to be with all of you this evening on this very august occasion. I use this opportunity to congratulate all the students who are graduating from this renowned institution, which within a decade has carved a niche for itself among the top most institutions of higher learning in this country. My exposure to the science and engineering departments of activities today, in the morning in fact, uh, Vice Chancellor took me to the laboratories as well as to, to a meeting. This was an eye-opener for me. The extraordinary breadth of research areas that this university is pursuing in these subjects and the strategy to increase the effectiveness of the outcomes of synergizing different themes is indeed novel and bold. I can say that this institution is fast evolving into a 21st century research university and preparing for the oncoming fourth industrial revolution. I've seen the impact of the great vision of the Chancellor, Sri Shivanadar, in effecting these transformations across the academic firmament of this university. My own life over the years have been considerably influenced by my teachers, mentors, and many well-wishers. I would like to single out three of them who played a significant role in shaping my career. I say this with the idea that many of the youngsters will certainly experience these kind of circumstances in your own life. And it would be good to know what happened to people like me when we were trying to establish ourselves in this country by working with some of the luminaries. First, it was Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Soon after MSc, I got an opportunity to join the research team under Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who was leading the groups in astronomy and astrophysics at the Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, at Ahmedabad, for pursuing my PhD degree. I may mention that PRL served as the cradle of the Indian space program under the visionary leadership and guidance of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. It is here I learned the methods of scientific research, which in turn shaped my capabilities of training the mind for incisive thinking and critical analysis. A good research worker, I don't have to say it here, is expected to acquire a broad knowledge base encompassing several subjects and themes, and also the ability to explore connections between multiple subjects with no obvious linkages on the surface. Dr. Sarabhai was instrumental in influencing the first major decision relating to my professional career. I had completed my PhD and was ready to accept a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of California at Berkeley. When Dr. Sarabhai heard about this, he immediately reacted to it by giving me an alternative for my future, particularly emphasizing emerging challenges and excitements in the new field of space research. It's the, he, the, the alternative, particularly in the, on which the country was embarking. I went on to emphasize, he actually, his, he was very emphatic about this. He went to emphasize that there is nothing like working in your own country. 
with such opportunities present themselves. The deep conviction in his advice and the persuasive powers of his arguments left me with no alternative than to decide to work in my own country. I, in retrospect, I don't regret in following his prophetic advice. <laughs> professor Davan, a distinguished professor in aeronautics and education, he succeeded Dr. Sarabhai as the head of India's space program. He was a man who sought high degree of professionalism and perfection in any task that he assigned to his juniors. Working with him gave me insights into the intricacies of management of a system as complex as space, also the process of decision making and the culture of transparency. He insisted on adopting practices of rigorous analysis and in identifying multiple pathways to decision making leading to an optimal solution, not necessarily a perfect one. This powerful approach has been adopted effectively in my later responsibilities with great success. The third chairman of his row to whom I worked was Dr. Professor U. R. Rao, was a well-known cosmic ray physicist as an astronomer and a man who was always in a hurry. He know his dynamism, and restlessness to achieve the results quickly and with right application of mind stemming from his deep familiarity with scientific methods, he, that made him really a unique leader. Working with him in, in building India's first satellite, Aryabhat, was a great experience of practicing scientific rigor, technological challenges, paying serious attention to the demands of the quality and reliability, adhering to strict controls on schedules and budgets, creating a new organizational structure, and above all, working with the culture of another country than the Soviet Union with whom we were collaborating. It was a total experience, systemic, if I am permitted to say so, and it gave me crucial insights about how to deal with realizing multidimensional and multidisciplinary outcome. What is equally important to recognize in this connection is that the starting from the scratch and with the need to learn the ABC of building a satellite and also confronted with a very poor industrial infrastructure in this country at that particular time, we were just given 36 months to build this design and build this satellite and we just did it in 40 months. <laughs> On this occasion, I remember with gratitude all these great men and many others with whom I had the fortune of working and because of whom the very even my professional life was made very eventful, satisfying and fulfilling. I may also mention that these three great pioneers, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Sadish Davan, and also Dr. U. R. Rao, these pioneers really laid the foundation for the India's space program. When I say it is India's space program, you just look at it today, we have ambitious planetary programs. We have set up an astronomical satellite which is the world's best. We have now built rockets which are comparable to some of the largest rockets in the world. And more recently, it has been decided that India will send a human being to the space. You see the boldness of these decisions, our confidence to do this kind of a thing. And this is what the message I would like to tell the youngsters. In a matter of 50 years, right from starting from the scratch, we built up a capability with which we are now able to compete with the best space powers in the world. What else do you want? And I think something bigger challenge waits for you on this occasion. Before I conclude, here is a small observation in the context of higher education, which I would like to share with all of you. Since time immemorial, we have practiced a holistic approach to knowledge acquisition and dissemination. The variety of courses in which education is imparted in your university places you in an advantageous position to bring in a holistic approach to the pedagogy. In the context, 
I would like to bring the case for a strong emphasis on liberal education. It is needless to go into the details to this erudite audience about the role of liberal education, an effective means to develop the freedom to think critically and independently and to cultivate one's mind to its full potential. It is often lamented that India produces very competent engineers but fall short of being great innovators. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was famous for his ideas on what makes products successful. According to him, the secret was to bring top-notch aesthetics with top-notch engineering. He himself is known to have said that why the Macintosh computers revolutionized computing. And I quote, I think part of what made Macintosh great was the people working on it were musicians and poets and artists and zoologists and historians who also happen to be the best computer scientists in the world. with an ecosystem which is conducive to bring the best of engineers with experts drawn from science, arts and humanities, one could really transform the outcomes of an education to create top-notch innovators, not only in the context of engineering, but also by marrying science education with arts and humanities and other subjects. I would like to say this because your own Vice Chancellor is very passionate now about bringing in for undergraduate curriculum, liberal education. I think it is going to transform the character of these universities' graduates in terms of the potential to contribute in an ever-dynamic and ever-changing job market in this world. I am sure you will succeed on this, Manjiji. I once again would like to express my grateful thanks to the Chancellor, Sri Shivadandar, and all of you for this very enriching and memorable experience today. Thank you.